All right, guys. Um, I'm gonna do things a little bit different tomorrow. Instead of breaking down this slate, because it's what uh eight game nine one two three four five six. It's an eight game slate tomorrow, and in a big slate like that, heading into April, I already know that it's pointless to break this down at this time of night because um a lot of players are gonna be rested. Some players are gonna have phony injuries, so they are rested, and it's gonna be hard to predict what each team is going to look like, right? So what I'm going to do is tomorrow, um, what time does the game The game starts at 7. So tomorrow at 5.30. 5.30 tomorrow, I'm going to come on. I'm going to break down all the games at that point. We should have a better picture of who's rested, who's not, and it'll make more sense at that time. For me to do it at this time of night is just not a good idea. I don't want to waste my time. I'm tired and... I just don't think it's worth it. But I will break down each game tomorrow at and I'll do it live. So at about five thirty live tomorrow, I'm gonna to break down every game, apply my system and see if we can come up with a lineup. But one thing that I am doing for sure tomorrow and it's almost proven to work every time is game stacking. I think game stacking is a technique that applies at the end of the season more so than not. I mean, people do it, and if you look at your, um, like, 10-time boosters and whatnot, you're going to see that, oh, I'm, I'm going to show you guys what I mean right now. If you look at people who score a lot that bet in these games that win quite often, you're going to see that, um, that, um, let's see, I just want to show you guys something. And this is, this is almost every night, it's frequent, right? You're going to realize that um, people stack games. For example, one, two, three, four, five plays from the Brooklyn game, right? Um, this person didn't have to. Again, one, two, three, four. So today, Brooklyn was a team to stack. And not just the Brooklyn game. But, um, like this person stacked the Miami game. One, two, three, four. So when you game stack, what happens is, especially if you take players from the same team, right? Like, um, like this person took DeRozan, Tucker, and Valanciunas. Three starters that was going to have the highest usage rate on this team, right? So if you stack all three, no matter which one have a good game, the other one will not. A team is going to score 100 points approximately every night. They're going to have rebound, a certain amount of rebounds. They're going to have a certain amount of assist blocks because that's just basketball. Mathematically, it makes sense to game stack. It's hard for me to get into why and the details, but just know that it's a good strategy, right? And... The reason I like game stacking the um, Bulls tomorrow is because there's a lot of value. Paul Zipser is only 3,800. He's starting and he's playing very well. He fits my system for the most part. 27 and 29, he can give you some good value as a starter in a good matchup. Covington does play decent defense, but the way I've. Zipser is a very big body guy, you know what I mean? And um, he's been hustling, he's playing hard. Then Robin Lopez is underpriced. We know that Philly gives up a ton of points to the center position. In 27.1 minutes, he put up 30 points. So, and he's been consistent, all right? Since Dwayne Wade went out, Robin Lopez has taken 12 to 16 shots a game. He got ejected early in the third quarter, so this is not real. But if this game would have, if he'd have played the entire game, he would have shot 12 to 16 shots. So his usage is up. Philly is giving up a bunch of rebounds to centers. They're generous to centers. And averaging 27 minutes in two games, he's already 30 fantasy points, which is about eight times value for his price. So Zipsa and Lopez come at the premium. Rondo and Butler, for the most part, has been just killing, right? Rondo just put up a 50-point game, 40-point game, 38-point game. And Butler is pretty much carrying the team. If he sees an opportunity to score, he will score. If not, he's going to get to the line. If not, he's if they double down on him, he's dishing the ball. He's playing defense. He's getting two to three steals a game. 
So I think if I stack the entire Chicago Bulls team who have something to play for, they're currently um, one game out the eighth seed. So it's a must-win time for them wrapping up this season. Um, so this, this game means a lot to them. It's a game that they expect to win. They're at home. I don't see the Bulls coming out s- slow tomorrow. I think if I stack the entire lineup, starting lineup, I expose myself to a lot of points. I don't know who's going to get it, but I see at least 220, 220, or at least 200. But I say 220 from the starting five tomorrow. And we're going to see how it play out. But I'm definitely going to try that tomorrow and see how it works. It's a strategy that people use on a regular basis. But now at the end of the season... You, you, it's hard to predict, man, especially at this time of night. It's midnight the night before. We don't know what teams are going to do and how they're going to approach it. A lot of teams are tanking. They're trying to get draft picks. And teams are experimenting to see which players they're going to keep and who they're going to let go. And it's all type of weirdness going on that I'm not even sitting here trying to pick players that's worth it at this point. I mean, I will break down the slate pre-lock tomorrow live. But other than that, I'm game. I'm definitely playing this lineup tomorrow. So for me to be able to stack the entire Chicago lineup and have a James Harden in there with Hollis Jefferson, who only played 14 minutes today. Hollis Jefferson played 14 minutes and had mid-30s for fantasy points. The 14 minutes means a lot to me because I think he'll play more minutes tomorrow in a better matchup against the Wizards. The Wizards give up a lot of rebounds to the fourth spot. And um, Hollis Jefferson been crashing the board. 16 rebounds in 14 minutes. Now, um, the Suns is a team that just throws up shots like crazy. Devin Booker took like 40 shots today. Of course he's going to do well. The guy took 26 field goal attempts, made nine. And he hit value because he's on the court for 40 minutes. They were down 30 in the in the fourth quarter, and they have him on the court. I don't know why. I don't think they had too much. They could. I don't know. But... Um, that was frustrating to see today. Um, so I think Richard Hollis Jefferson plays tomorrow. We know the Celtic, the the Wizards are generous to forwards in 27 minutes averaging, in three games averaging 27 minutes against this Washington team. He's scoring 25.1. And um, we knew that he was in and out the lineup all season. So now that he's starting, I feel more confident with him tomorrow. I love that pick. And then Alex Len is a starter for the um, Phoenix Suns. Um, and going against Boston, we know that a center is good for at least a point per minute. He gets mid-20s and get me mid-20s fantasy points. I think with the game stack, we'll be um, in the money tomorrow. I'm only playing... Um, Probably only play 50-50 on here on now. It's just the end of the season is too wild. You know, I can't predict or apply a system accurately when teams are not. So what guys done in the last three games or have been doing recently may not apply because coaches are trying different things every day. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm, I'm really just I, – I, I'm almost throwing back all the money that I made all season at the end of the season when I know better. So from now on, I'm I'm going to do a lot of game stacking. I know it's going to be a good idea tomorrow. And at 5.30 pre-lock, I'm going to break down the slate once all the injury or most of the injury news are out and we have a better idea what the games are going to look like. I'll break it down. I'll pick a lineup that fits my um, system as well, and I'll probably play it in a couple tournaments. But game stacking is the way I'm going from here on out. I think it's just the easiest way to maximize on some um, earning potential. So that's it for tonight, short and sweet. Um, oh, I, I just want to kind of um, break down my lineups tonight, see what went good, what went wrong. Um, what's this? Rondo, that's last night. So the first lineup, Chris Paul, I'm not upset at Chris Paul. Reddick could have done better. Porzingis and Tucker did their job. Brook Lopez, between him and Lynn, they could have gave me about 15 more points. Aldridge and DeAndre Jordan did their job. So if I'd have got 15 more between um, Brook Lopez and Lynn, 
that would have been what 65 and then another 10 75 275 and then down here jj barrea got ejected for something stupid so that's when i pretty much knew that i was out and then um Kawhi Leonard kind of under. If he would have gave me 10 more and J.J. Barrea gave me 20 more, I would have been in the 270s and both lineups would have hit. So, tough night again. Like I said, I'm game stacking from here on out. I'm not really trying to pick players because at this point in the season, it's just not worth it. And um, tomorrow, pre-lock, I'll break down the slate and apply my system and see what we come up with.